Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and today we're playing Sid Meier Civilization VI Gathering Storm with the New Frontier Pass. Ever since the release of Eleanor with the Gathering Storm expansion, I have been bombarded with constant requests for me to do a peaceful domination game as France or England. That means I have to get a domination win screaming without ever actually capturing a city with a military unit, arguably the strangest and most difficult way to win a domination victory, because it basically requires you to win a religious and cultural victory at the same time. Now I've resisted the cause for this, because in my opinion this is going to be the the most painful, torturous experience you can possibly have while playing Civ 6. You see, when you're playing on maximum difficulty, the AI gets absolutely insane bonuses that makes this challenge especially difficult, but we'll talk more about that later. Instead, I'm going to take the bullet for the team because why else do I exist except to publicly humiliate myself and suffer for the enjoyment of an adoring yet scornful crowd? How are we going to be doing this? Well, first, we're going to play for a full entire hour without realizing Dido cities can't be flipped and that they made changes to how the loyalty flipping mechanic works, so that it's even more difficult than when my good colleague Spiffing Brit did this. Without further ado, let's get into the introduction. Today we're going to be doing something you guys have been asking for for a long time. We're going to be doing a peaceful domination game as Eleanor of Aquitaine playing France. Eleanor's leader ability causes minus one loyalty per turn in foreign cities within nine tiles in cities with great works. For each great work, it's a minus one penalty to enemy loyalty, and so we'll be able to make use of this to try to flip enemy cities, because when an enemy city flips independent, Eleanor gets that city instantly. To make our life a little bit easier, we will of course be playing on Pangaea, deity difficulty, completely standard game settings, and we'll also add in the Secret Societies mode. Let's get started. Now this is definitely not pod racing because this starting location is absolutely atrocious. But we may as well do what we'll do. I think we'll settle in place because we do have a Plains Hill right here. Our tiles are really bad, but we can settle in place, which is totally fine. And we do have potential for things like the Pyramids and Petra if we so choose. Let's do the normal things like get a couple of scouts at the beginning of the game. Religion can be helpful in a loyalty based play, but I don't really have anywhere good to put a holy site, so I'm not going to go for a religion this game. Instead I'll prioritize getting animal husbandry because that leads to archery and I can defend myself in the early game. We already found ourselves a tribal village and I'm hoping that I get the void singers from this. Oh, I was unlucky. Plus one population does open up some interesting choices for us, but I think we're going to stick to producing scouts for now. I could go for a super fast settler here. However, scouts are just so good in the early game that I'm having a really hard time justifying not getting them. Oh, Geneva managed to find me. And in fact, I was the first person to meet them, netting me plus one science. We discovered a secret society, the Elves of Minerva, owing to the fact that the Vatican City found me as well. And I was the first to find them too, so I got myself plus one faith per turn. That's going to be helpful for getting my Pantheon. And we met Dido as well, hello. And she's also trying to clear out this barb camp. Let's appoint Pingala and slap him into my capital. His 15% increase in the science and culture is going to be very helpful. If I clear this barb camp and grab myself a, another governor title, I'm kind of tempted to get Amani here. Well, we did clear it, but we didn't get a governor title. I am kind of worried, though, about the uh, total amount of damage that my guy might be taking here. Well, we have animal husbandry. Let's get to work on mining. Yeah, I think that warrior is a sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice I was willing to make on the chance of getting a, gov a governor title. I'd love to get a settler right now, but I think I need a slinger to help clear out some of these barbs. Yeah, uh, he died. Unfortunate. He, if I had been able to get that promotion, it would have been fine. Oh, another tribal village for my sins? Uh, no. Uh, I did not get the Void Singers. However, I can become suzerain of the Vatican City, which I will do. Oh, and they actually revealed to me where the Sahara Al Beda is and got me some very nice error score. Wait, it was right here? <laughs> How did I miss this? Another barb camp to the north and a tribal village. Another chance of the Void Singers. Tribal village, please. Where is the Void Singers? This is absurd. Oh, another tribal village to the north. Hey, and we found Rapa Nui. Oh, and here's the Maori too. Exchange information on our capitals. You're all the way over here. What is your warrior doing up here? Sometimes the Maori doesn't uh, <laughs> doesn't make any sense to me. Since Dido Forward settled me a little bit, I would like to get a city a cut or two in here to try to block off that land for myself. Let's kill a unit with the Slinger to get us the boost for archery. And we'll switch away from archery because we're not quite ready to finish it, but we can finish it very, very quickly. Oh, another tribal village, another roll on the Void Singers, and I failed. But I mean, a builder isn't the end of the world because I can improve this uh, corn tile. 
Clear another barb camp for an extra bit of gold and we got the sanguine pact. Not what I'm looking for, unfortunately. However, I am going to be making good use of a Manny thanks to that extra governor title, especially because I want to take Emissary, which uh, lowers the loyalty per turn of enemy cities within nine tiles by two. In the meantime, we'll assign her to Singapore to pick up uh, suzerainty of them. And we met the Cree as well. He's all the way down to the south. And it looks like he's already built the Great Bath. Let's upgrade our Slingers to Archers. That'll give us really, really good early game security because no one should be able to beat these for at least 40 turns. We'll also pick up Bronze Working for Iron because that'll give me a really nice tile to work. I mean, provided I'm lucky enough to actually find Iron. Boom, improve our quarry, get the boost for Masonry. And then we have a better tile to work. Singapore has become my suzerainty. And they seem to have revealed a, another tribal village to me, which is very, very important. I'm still trying to roll for that Void Singer, uh, you know, governor title, but it doesn't seem to be hitting for me. Now that we have Foreign Empire, we can start thinking about traders. I'm going to make friendship with Dido real quick so that she can't declare war on me. So I feel a bit safer in the early game. And I'd like to head towards drama and poetry. So I think I'll pick up early empire. Improve the copper to get the boost towards craftsmanship and the boost towards wheel. Let me have three really nice tiles to work. Tribal village, please. Where, where are the void singers? I mean, Dido found them. Maybe if I send her a delegation, I forget what you need, but you need like a certain amount of uh, access to them. We also found Alexander over here and his army is already looking very scary. I'm glad that he's nowhere near me. Time to pick a pantheon. And in this particular game, I have an awful lot of desert floodplains as well as a good amount of marsh. So I feel like Lady of the Reeds and Marshes would give me a really strong production boost in the early game. I mean, just look at these desert floodplains. Now they're two food, two production, and these marshes are two food, or, or three food, two production rather. Now my ideal city locations, I think I'm gonna work on a trader because I need to get more visibility with Dido. There's bronze working, brilliant. And my goodness, I found four copies of iron in this desert. Okay, that makes this absolutely necessary for me to settle this as soon as possible. Second settler completed, let's get him over here. And we'll position this trade route in my capital in order to trade with Dido. Time for a monument as well. I've been waiting far too long for early empire. I need, I need access to, I need access to the Void Singers. I guess I'm just not gonna get Void Singers until very late into this game. I mean, rushing printing is technically a thing because I don't really need much from the tree, but like right now my science is so low, it's not even really possible. Now well, sometimes the Civ 6, Sid Meier's dice just hates you. I'm really hoping there's even more tribal villages down here to the south that I can find. Oh my god, look at the Maori, look what they're doing. What are you doing over here? Your capital is over here, man. You gotta relax. All right, pop down our third city and oh, she likes that I'm not settling on the coast. Or maybe she doesn't like it, I can't remember. But this city is way better than it has any right to be, thanks to my Pantheon. Let's see if we can't get the pyramids down in here. It's a long shot, but it's one I'm willing to go for. All right, we are in the classical era as a golden age, and I have quite a few options. I could go for Exodus of the Evangelist to get plus four great profit points per turn. I mean, none of the religions have gone, and nobody's really earning great profit points, so you know what, let's do it. Let's take Exodus the Evangelists and get ourselves a religion. Very happy that Early Empire is finished and I can pop in here, slap in the colonization card, begin working on state workforce, recruit Magnus, put him into my capital, and assign Pingala to Marseille. Although Marseille doesn't have as good food as Lyon does, so maybe Pingala belongs in Lyon. Regardless, we definitely need to settle as many cities as possible. The more cities we have, the more great people points we can generate, which means the more great works we can have to put pressure on our enemies. Dido would like open borders, and that seems like a very one-sided deal that I'm gonna accept. I bought myself some more marsh tiles because goddamn are these tiles really powerful. Oh, another desert wonder. This time it's the Eye of the Sahara. Oh, hey, we found a barb camp that I might be able to clear. Oh, not quite. Maybe I can do it again next turn. State workforce is unlocked. I want to get my governor plaza pretty early this game. Weirdly enough, there's actually a very good industrial zone in this city if I choose to go for it. I kind of like the idea of going for an early, uh, industrial zone in my capital. And I may as well throw down the government plaza right beside that. I will finish this settler first. All right, sweet, free great profit. I mean, I can't actually found a religion without a holy site, but that's the least of my worries right now. For now, he'll just serve as an elaborate scout to empty out the fog of war. Let's get this city planted next. And this sort of arrangement was mainly so that I could exert as much pressure as possible on Dido. 
and we'll promote Magnus with the provision promotion so that we can spam out settlers without losing population in our capital. Coupe, this is not okay, dude. You can't settle here. Go away. I really hope Coupe doesn't settle on this spot because please don't settle there. Okay, thank you. Because that would have blocked me from settling on this wine over here. Speaking of which, let's settle on the wine. A government Plaza completed. That'll net me an extra promotion. I'll slap this one onto Pingala to get extra culture. I'm not sure why Dido is moving a massive army through my territory. I mean, we are declared friends, so she can't declare war on me. But I'm not sure who else she's at war with or something. Is she maybe looking to go to war with Coupe? He's the only other player in this direction. Ah, who knows what the AI gets up to in their own time. You ever make a builder and not remember why you made him? Yep. That's me right now. Oh, it looks like Dido's trying to kill the Vatican City. Ooh, there's Ikil over here on the eastern side of the empire. Or, well, not it's not my empire yet. It's on the eastern side of the continent. How much hubris can one person have? I'm already calling this entire continent mine. I haven't even converted a single city yet. Don't you worry, Baruta. Your time is coming. I don't know where you think you're bringing that settler, Dido, but it better not be to the east. Let's try to make a wall of units around the settler to prevent it from going anywhere but back west. Happy days, you managed to grab political philosophy. Let's go ahead and plug in Classical Republic for the 15% great people points. Plus one production in all cities. Plus 30% production towards builders. And plus two influence towards as earning city-state envoys. There's something really magical about watching these wonder construction movies. I really, really enjoy it. It's one of those details about the game that I super appreciate. Finally, we have access to the theater square and drama and poetry. Theater squares are gonna be our number one priority and we're gonna be trying to get great writers as soon as possible. Nobody else is going for them just yet, so I should have an advantage going out the gate. Let's grab Ancestral Hall in the capital too, so we can build settlers even faster. And don't you ever come back, settler. You are not welcome to the east. Vatican City seems to be holding for now. It would be better if they had an archer in here shooting out. Games and Recreation is finished and we're gonna be making use of entertainment complexes this game as well. Ford settled the Cree, not an ideal location by any stretch of the imagination. Ancestral Hall completed in the capital. That's going to be a 50% boost in production towards settlers in this city. Now I'm building settlers in only six turns. Governor title wise, I think it's good to finally pick up Emissary on Amani. Although actually thinking about it, maybe Researcher is better for that extra science, because my science is pretty weak right now. First theater square completed in Lyon. Drop a farm down, get the boost towards feudalism. Plug in the amphitheater in Marseille as well. I finally have enough money to buy this tile and then I'll buy this tile in Lyon, switch it over to Marseille and place down my theater square adjacent to that district. And we'll build that after this archer. Unfortunately, the Vatican City is about to fall and I'm in a little bit of a dark age. It's not that big of a deal, but I can get a lot of value from pen, brush and voice because I'll get plus one error score for each building that has a great work that I construct. Since I'm already working on an amphitheater, that seems like some guaranteed, uh, you know, error score. Let's work on apprenticeship for the plus one production from mines as well as access to the industrial zone. Oh, I really want 100% production towards buildings and theater squares. So I'm going to vote that up. I'll need at least six votes to overpower whatever these guys vote for, as long as they're only voting one time. Nice, we managed to overpower all the other voters and now we get 100% production towards theater squares. And I correctly chose Alexander as the target for public relations. Now I'm getting that amphitheater in four turns. Yep, there goes the Vatican City. Feudalism's always worth picking up for plus food on your farms and the plus two builder card. Now that we have grants on Pingala, I'm gonna reassign him over to Leon. That 100% uh, great people points benefit's gonna work really well in this city. Congo wants to go on a joint war against Alexander, but this is a peaceful game for me. I'm sorry, buddy, I just can't do it. Amphitheater completed in Lyon. Now I would like to work theater square festivals to speed up how quickly I get my great writers, but they did actually update theater squares to give plus two adjacency to um, culture districts. And there's an absolutely perfect spot for an entertainment complex right there, which should bring both of these theater squares up to plus four or even plus five adjacency. Just researched apprenticeship. So I'm gonna throw down that delicious plus five industrial zone in my capital. Fanganui is uh, in a bit of an annoying spot because I was hoping to do a bit of settling out here, but so I'll just have to settle cities efficiently nearby. Theater square complete in Tulu. Let's grab another amphitheater, especially because I'm building them twice as fast as I normally would right now. Plug in serfdom and diplomatic league so we have better builders and envoys. Been sitting on this one envoy for a little while and I think I'd like to give it to Antananarivo. That plus 2% culture is amazing, so there we are. That feel when you're six turning an amphitheater in a city that has 12 production. 
Honestly, this feels a little bit like cheating. I, f I, I feel like I say that every game, but I, I really did just randomly load up a game and be like, eh, we'll try the peaceful domination thing. And now everything seems to be just working perfectly for me. My only real threat of a neighbor is Dido and she's perfectly happy to be in a friendship with me. Already generating 6.9 great rider points per turn. I absolutely recommend you not commenting on that number in my comment section, all right? Listen. If I see a single comment on the significance of this number, you're all in huge trouble, okay? All right, nice. We got our entertainment complex in Leon. Now look at that amazing adjacency. That's 10 culture across these two districts. Oh man, I really love those changes to the entertainment square. Question is, what the hell do I do in Leon? Do I go for a theater square festival and get my uh, great people faster? Honestly, I feel like the faster I get my great people, the faster I can start snowballing and winning the game. So I should really think of these like theater square festivals like training military units. Industrial zone complete my capital, netting me a nice 28 production per turn, five of which is coming from that industrial zone. I don't think I'm going to bother building the workshop because it's only plus three production. And instead, I'll go back to building settlers to spread out across the north. These cities won't directly influence other players, but I can generate even more great people points up here. Oh, nice. We got our first rider. Yoink. Yes. Let's start placing those great works. Enough. And I'm hoping that I might be able to get a, at least a normal age next era because the loyalty in these cities is going to be pretty tough to break. Ooh, we've already got a city flipping independent. This is amazing. Can I speed that along somehow? I'm trying to think what my best move would be to get this to go faster. It's only just barely negative in loyalty. So maybe if I swung my builder over to La Rochelle or even better, if I bought a builder in here and used it to chop out the jungle, that could net me a bit of population in here, and then I could exert even more pressure on this city. Li Bai is my next great rider, and uh, oh, we're slowly but surely putting a bit of pressure on Baruda. I just hope she doesn't get a golden age next era. Let's see if we can't speed up this Cree city uh, flipping independent by moving a couple of great works into La Rochelle. Currently says six turns. We grab these great works, we pop them into La Rochelle. And it did actually increase the negative pressure here quite significantly. So we shaped the turn off this city flipping independent. And I'm, I'm hoping this is actually going to be an amazing bridge uh, deeper into the continent. I just remembered that Dido's cities can't actually flip independent. I was like, hang on a minute. Shouldn't there be more loyalty here? But nope, apparently, uh, coastal cities founded by Phoenicia and located on the same con continent as Phoenicians' capital at 100% loyal. This would have been an amazing start. I, some of these cities should have been flipping independent, but um, apparently they just get to ignore loyalty, which is, which is uh, kind of a problem for me. Like a big problem. <laughs> kind of like a really big problem for me. The entire point of this game is to try to loyalty flip people. Despite the problems that we'll have dealing with Dido, I'm going to go ahead and power on because I'm already having a really good time and a really good game. Casually stealing both positive world resolutions for myself. Merchant Republic is fantastic for us because it gives us a 15% production boost towards our districts, which will just plus 100% theater square adjacency. Don't mind if I do. Oh my god, the, the adjacency in here is plus 7. And that's getting doubled all the way up to 14 culture per turn. I'm making 94 culture per turn. That's an absurd amount of culture, especially when you compare it to everyone else. Now, as much as I want to pick up something like Reformed Church, unfortunately, I do have to go for a diplomatic service because I need to get a spy. Unlike my colleague, the Spiffing Brit, I was incredibly unlucky this game and I did not find the Void Singers. That means the only way that I'm going to get access to them is if I can get my diplomatic visibility with Dido up to a high enough level to discover the secret society inside of their civilization. Murasaki Shibuku is going to join my empire. And now I can stop futilely trying to convert these Phoenician cities and instead um, focus on spreading down to the south and east. Promote Amani with an Emissary for that extra two loyalty pressure per turn. That's going to start giving me just a little bit of pressure with Huanguni. Fangun Fangunui. God, I never know how to pronounce the city's name. Fanguni? Makwa Sakahikan has flipped independent and flipped to me. This is the, my favorite ability of Eleanor, where a city flips independent and you instantaneously claim it for your empire. The one exception to Dido cities that can't flip independent is the Vatican City. It is not coastal and doesn't have a Kothon, so I can slowly start chipping away at the loyalty in here. I don't know where you think you're going to go with the settler, Dido. There's only a few spots that you could possibly land it. Hieronymus Bosch is a great artist who's joined my empire as well. My big problem is I haven't actually unlocked art museums to place his great works. Also, how do you pronounce this city's name? Chart? Is this city really called Chart?
Ooh, enters the Renaissance era. There's printing, amazing, and we grabbed guilds. Now printing gives us a high access level, but I, how have I not discovered the Void Singers? Do I really need even higher levels of access? Maybe an economic alliance with Dido will help. I have top secret. I can see everything. There, there, there is no more secrets they can keep from me. I thought you, wait, how come I haven't met the Void Singers? Anyway, let's just grab Exodus the Evangelist because I do plan to settle my religion this era. But seriously, I thought if you got top secret knowledge of someone, you would discover their secret society. Am I just wrong about that? Does that just not work? Oh, thank Christ, I was right. I did discover the Void Singers. I just had to let the turn end. God, you have no idea how long I've been waiting to get access to these guys. The first thing that the Void Singers do is that they convert your monuments into Old God Obelisks. Old God Obelisks give you plus one culture, plus four faith, and they give you plus one great work slot in the city. That's so incredibly powerful for Eleanor because each great work in one of our cities gives minus one loyalty per turn in foreign cities within nine tiles, and they automatically flip towards us. This is why I wanted the Old God Obelisk really early into the game, and it's only now that I just got it. I am deeply upset that I've only just unlocked this. There's no use crying over spilt tribal villages, however, so let's get on with it. The Vatican City is under a little bit of loyalty pressure. Let's reassign Amani over to Maqua and that'll provide some loyalty pressure on the Vatican. And now I can use Hieronymus Bosch, who's a great artist despite not having art museums, for even more pressure against the Vatican City. Let's also promote the Void Singers with Ritual that converts 20% of my faith into gold, science, and culture without actually taking that faith away from me. I'm only making about 20 faith per turn, which isn't a massive amount, but I will be building a holy site soon, so that's going to be very helpful. I feel like Leon is the perfect Petra city. 16 turns is a pretty long time for a Petra, especially considering how late into the game it is, but if I could actually get that Petra, these hills are gonna be insane. Oh, Vatican City, it's only 13 turns away. Forward settling our enemies, I mean friend, our friend. <laughs> Coupe, we're, we're definitely friends. I'm not forward settling this so I can purchase an old god obelisk in here and then slap a great work of writing in it to exert enough pressure on Fuang Gunui to flip it independent. No, sir, this is definitely a friendly settlement. Thanks for the Vatican City, Dido. I mean, it was a city state, so she kind of did me a favor by capturing it and allowing me to flip it. Let's steal suzerainty of Antananarivo. That'll boost me up to nearly 200 culture per turn. Ugh, and there's gonna be some islands for me to settle. Although it could be a good way for me to start exerting pressure on Tanarivo, Ainuk, and uh, Coupe's capital. Now, William Shakespeare has joined my empire and has written Romeo and Juliet. Hopefully Romeo and Juliet is just the thing that I need to flip Dido onto my side. I mean, just look at her. I'm sure she loves the tragic romance. I'd love to keep this banana tile around La Rochelle, but I need to force you up to seven population, so it's time to get harvesting. If I can get La Rochelle up to seven population, I'll be able to place down a holy site and completely surround Sahara al Beda with them. That means once I actually get my religion with the <laughs> little grey prophet that I've been just keeping on the side over here. Yep, it's turn 141 and I still haven't founded my religion. But if I wait just long enough to where I have all four of these holy sites, I'll be getting really good faith income. And the second I create my religion, all of these cities will flip. 15 turns on Fang to flip. I'd like to speed that up, so I'm going to purchase the amphitheater in Rhymes and then steal some great works to pop into Rhymes. Hey, Petra is a brilliant display of man's artistry. That's also a brilliant display of how good your tiles can be. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is my very first great musician. His musical great works will be put to great use in flipping enemy cities. And with all that extra loyalty pressure, Fang Wee is down to minus seven loyalty per turn. That is so much better. One turn in Fangoni. Thank you very much for the free city. I do kind of feel like an amorphous pink blob spreading across the map, just eating everything in my way. No, Dido, no. You were supposed to wait. My settler's on the way. Why would you do this to me? I needed this. I needed it to exert loyalty. Ah. I feel like the AI is explicitly programmed to screw me over in particular. We have our quad of really good holy sites finished. So we're churning out an insane amount of faith right now at 116. The only thing more resistible than a religion is the Venetian arsenal. So by creating the religion of the Venetian arsenal and using the cheeky Jesuit education belief, 
we'll be able to rapidly spread and generate insane amounts of faith and create great work buildings instantly, all thanks to patiently getting ourselves a golden age and a great profit earlier in the game. Venetian, <laughs> Venetian Arsenal is the true path of salvation. Please ignore all those other ones. And now you can see by waiting patiently, we have got our religion in a bunch of our cities because a lot of people might not know this but when you found a religion it's instantly established in every single city that you have a holy site in. I do need to get rid of all these religious units inside my borders however so we're gonna go ahead and launch an inquisition and start recruiting a ridiculous amount of inquisitors. I have been waiting a long time for the industrial era not only because we get to access some of these delicious things with our golden age like, for example, reform the coinage, which gives me an extra three gold per specialty district in the foreign city on international trade routes. But more importantly, because it gives me access to the indoctrination Void Singers promotion. And this is the promotion that makes the Void Singers insane. And it's also why I founded my religion just a few turns ago. Indoctrination unlocks the cultist unit. This unit is purchased with faith and uses charges to reduce loyalty in foreign cities and generate relics of the void. Cultists are so amazing because I can start using them like offensive loyalty bombs to flip enemy cities. And since I can't exactly get good pressure on uh, Macedon, it's going to be the only way that I start flipping their cities. Some really good news is that Sidon doesn't actually have a coat on, so I might be able to get a wedge in here to break the loyalty. The best part of cultists, however, is that they are purchased with faith, which means I can use the theocracy government to discount them by 15%. Granada isn't quite flipping as fast as I would like it to. I don't have time to wait 22 turns. Let's use our cultists to flip it just that little bit quicker. That's much more acceptable. I should be able to flip it next turn, actually. 40 loyalty left on the city of Granada. One, two, three, four cultist charges. And my city now has negative loyalty. Lovely, Granada belongs to me. Loyalty in Pella will be a little bit harder to break because we're going to need so many cultists. But if we can break Pella, that will be our very first capital under our belt. Huh. The Cree declared war upon Dido, so that means I'm at war with them as well. I'm going to need walls and some defensive units down here, namely crossbowmen and field cannons. It's a slight little hiccup to my game plan, but I don't think it'll stop me. And Sidon actually rebelled as well towards me, which gives me quite a bit more territory and easier access to Dido's capital. I do have a plan in mind to deal with that capital, but you'll have to wait a while until I can make it come to fruition. 100% production towards buildings in my holy sites and plus 10 strength for the Venetian arsenal. Truly, the Venetian arsenal is the most powerful wonder in the game. Are you kidding me? A single tile forest fire almost killed my cultist over here? Oh god, a thousand year flood in my capital just wiped out all of my farms. I mean, at the very least, it did me a little favor of fertilization, but god damn, that's a lot of build charges to lose. Now's as good as time as any to start flipping Pella. Pretty sure a city can only get a maximum of 20 loyalty per turn, provided it uh, doesn't have any supreme modifiers like Dido Special Ability or the Statue of Liberty. Oh, hey, we got our first relic. The really cool thing that I like is when you have cultists on one charge and you use them, you can step cultists into where they stood on the same turn and continue to press the loyalty down. We're at a 30 out of 100 loyalty. If I could do another round of that, this city should flip to me. It's on 49.1 loyalty. That means I only need to use five cultist charges. Three, four, five. So the very first capital has been taken in the peaceful domination victory. It should have flipped independent, but I guess I need to make it go like super negative into loyalty. It's a little bit weird that it didn't flip back to me, but I thought I did everything correctly. It doesn't make any sense. The city, ha like the loyalty pressure in this city went negative. Um, surely it should flip. Oh, well, I'll just send my guys north and we'll have to like progressively take bites out of them. Oh, Tarapa has flipped independent for me. I really do feel like this is, uh, this is like deliciously overpowered in a way that just brings me so much joy because now Opango is starting to flip independent as well. And the Garawaya is not far behind. That'll pretty much open up the borders to the Congo. Another city bites the dust. I'll reassign Reina here. It's because I managed to pick up the contractor promotion for her. Since this city doesn't have any districts, I'll be able to instantly purchase a holy site to theater square in here and start pumping out uh, loyalty pressure. 
I'm gonna try this loyalty flip thing again because I'm not really sure why it's not working for me. I currently have the city on zero loyalty and I've continued to add more negative loyalty. I'm hoping that does the trick. Come on, Amphilopolopolos, however you say that city's name, please flip independent. I don't understand, the city has negative loyalty. Surely, surely it should flip independent. That's how it used to work, no? I've given the city like minus 50 loyalty right now and I really just needed to flip independent. I stole another two cities from the Marais, but I'm not sure that's good enough. I think they might have changed or broken how this works. It used to be if you got a city to zero loyalty, it would flip at the start of your enemy's turn. But it looks like they changed it to where cities have to actually be taking a loyalty, negative loyalty pressure to flip. The problem with that is people like Dido don't actually allow you to flip cities. I can still flip her capital if I can get the loyalty here negative enough. Reina is establ established in Alexandrupoli. Let's purchase ourselves a theater square. We'll also purchase an entertainment complex. We'll use faith to get an amphitheater in this city. And then we'll use our gold to grab an art museum. Now, if I come over to Alexandrupoli, I should be able to stuff at least six great works in here. And if I also work the bread and circuses, that's going to give me extra loyalty pressure, which should hopefully put Amphipolis, Am Amphipolis into negative loyalty. I've also been trying to use my spy on this city, but he keeps getting kicked out. It's telling me that like a new person is established here, but that makes no sense. I'm assuming there's like some bugs with the loyalty system uh, that interact with like how spies work. I, I just, I can't think of any other explanation for why it's being so weird on me. I mean, if I don't hurry up and win this loyalty domination victory, I'm going to eventually win by tourism. How is the loyalty pressure in this city going up? Oh, I see. It's a 22 population city. Oh, I have no idea how to fix this. Finally, I managed to get enough pressure to get this city into negative loyalty. I had to chop out basically all of the jungle in this city and keep working the bread and circuses thing. Now it should flip independent. Yeah, I'm like 99% sure cities can't flip independent unless they have negative loyalty, which kind of significantly nerfs this strategy, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad about or anything, considering, you know, it was only, you know, it was only after years of being asked to do this and I, I waited and then eventually, when I eventually did it, yeah, the, the strategy had been nerfed. No, I'm not, I'm not salty. I'm, I'm not like, I'm not mad about that or anything, you know, you know, it's not nothing that, um, I'm fine. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Right. It's, it's not a big deal. My spy was just murdered. Look, I'm fine. I'm, f I'm, listen, this is my, this is my, I'm fine voice. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally fine. Oh my God. Finally, it flipped to me. Jesus Christ. The amount of pressure this city was generating is insane. Finally, at long last, actually get to work on Pella. He's getting all the relics now. Why is there so much food and housing in this city? This is so unnecessary. You know what really annoys me? I spent all that time in a golden age trying to flip cities when I couldn't. And now that I am finally starting to flip cities, I'm about to hit a dark age. I don't know why you settled a city here, Phoenicia, because this is just going to flip to me. And I hate it. I hate everything about this city. It's not even coastal. There's fresh water right there. <sighs> okay, potato, remain calm. It's an aggravating game, but there's no need to screech, okay? You're fine. It's all gonna be fine. Got their capital now as well. Our first peacefully conquered capital, actually. I mean, apparently Tyre is gonna flip in uh, 21 turns. If I can get cultists over there fast enough, I might be able to flip their capital. The nice thing about this city being so heavily populated is that I can swing in and instantaneously purchase something like a theater square in here. <laughs> Tido's capital is gonna rebel in seven turns, my God. Where are these machine gun armies coming from? Oh my god, the Kree have over 500 sides per turn. Listen, Kree, right, we, we, we need to do peace, right? Listen, <laughs> we've been at war long enough. Thank you for the peace deal, bye-bye. How the hell did they get 500 sides per turn? Oh, of course Macedon is now in a heroic age. And so is the Kree, the two people I need to conquer this era. That's just my luck. This city was at 0 0.3 positive loyalty last turn, and now it's plus 8. It's gonna make my life hell. Eh, at least Dido's not really doing too great, and I can use two more of these uh, cultist charges to steal her capital this turn. Oh, this is actually the perfect opportunity to give uh, the Kree negative loyalty. 
and I'll be able to take advantage of that. Perfect. Minus five loyalty to every Cree city. I just nabbed Dido's capital using loyalty. Ah, oh, they're positive 1.6 loyalty. I need to get this number down. I think my best bet is to try to convert the city. I don't actually need this city, but it, it acts as a really good way to get my way into the Congo. Wait, how did Inuk flip to the Cree? I thought cities flip independent based on, like, no matter what. It, it's like it should have flipped to me because I'm Eleanor. It doesn't make any sense. Ah, uh, the grey goo, or pink goo rather, expands into Alexandretta. I do really feel like, um... The game is less fun with these changes they've made. Part of the appeal of this strategy is that it was just kind of ludicrous and silly and not something that you would actually ever go for in any sort of competitive game. And I do feel like a game misses something when the developers start taking out niche, you know, powerful strategies that are somewhat impractical, but really, really, really fun to execute. And the first Congo City falls to my loyalty pressure gambit. Mbanzambata is next up on the chopping block. Inuk finally decided to join the correct civilization. And this is going to be the thin end of the wedge that cracks the Cree Empire in half. It's very hard to actually catch the cities flipping because it happens in the turn transition and then the game like flips your camera all over the map. My loyalty pressure is so insane, even Venice is flipping onto my side. Venice is mine and a Mbanza Nasundi is wide open. Time to just spam as many cultists at it as I can. Two, and a three, and a four, and the city will be no more. And the thin end of the wedge expands against the Kree as well. Musumin is coming down. All right, this time I'm gonna to try to catch Mbanza and the Sunday flipping. Yes, give me your cities. Every time I'm moving these great works around, I feel like I'm moving little loyal soldiers into position to uh, ruin the loyalty of my enemies. I've probably put about five hours of work into creating this giant pink blob of an empire. What's funny is though, initially I thought Dido was going to be a really big barrier to me winning the game. And now it's turning out to be the Cree. What's extra funny is what I decided to call my save files when I originally thought Dido was my problem. Oh, I love this. I can build railroads in my uh, ally slash enemy territory. So I can like build the railroads that will bring my cultists to, uh, to bear upon the Cree. I'm getting a little bit worried that I might win a culture victory before I mean to. It says 100 turns here, but I think I'm going to win it a lot sooner than that. What's funny to me is, though, like this peaceful domination game, it's as if you have to win the game like three times because you have to win a religious victory and you have to win a tourism victory and then you can do like a peaceful domination victory. Which is why I think it's really dumb that they nerfed it by making cultists, uh, you know, not really work unless the city already has negative loyalty. You, if you were pulling this strategy off, you were basically already winning the game. I've got two out of the five capitals captured. Yoink, thank you very much for the capital, Congo. And I even managed to grab myself Machu Picchu by stealing this. Pretty much the most impossible wonder to get on DD difficulty. Whenever I see the city called PP Kiss, it's, I always think of PP Kiss Kiss, which really just sounds like some very strange game your uncle made you play. Oh, looks like I managed to win the World's Fair without even trying. I guarantee you, we used absolutely zero illegal doping methods. Wait, this is the World's Fair, not the Olympics. Never mind. I gotta be honest, the longer I stare at the name of this city, the less comfortable I become. So I decided to rename it to something I could actually look at. The other advantage is the new name makes it really easy to find in the list. Time for Miss Tahi Sippy Kick. But I, I don't even know. Like sometimes, I swear to God, I, I read a city's name and my brain gets like about five letters in and then has no idea what to say. Well, regardless, Sip, Sipik, Sipik is mine now. As much as I love you, Antananarivo, I am going to have to get rid of you because I need to get some extra pressure on the Mare's capital. So it's a bye bye from me. We do have some fantastic news. The world has entered the atomic era and we're in a golden age and everyone else that we care about in, is in a normal age. In particular, the Cree, because we were having a really hard time getting the loyalty in these cities to flip negative until this new era came about. That's right, if you can't beat them by rushing them down, sometimes just a little bit of patience is all you need. The other great thing is the Atomic Era gives us access to the Master Plan. This unlocks the Dark Summoning, a city project that provides lots of faith while active and upon completion raises the amount of loyalty damage done by cultists. We definitely want to go ahead and unlock that. Then go through to basically every single city in my empire and make sure it's doing dark summoning. This is going to be a, uh, a long, 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 long and long and tedious process of going through every single city 
and uh, making sure we got the dark summoning going. There we go. Every single city has dark summoning queued up as its next project. I'm wondering just how high my faith per turn will go. Ah, finally, we have started to put the pressure on Coupe's capital. Now, it says it'll take about 799 turns for him to flip. But at this rate, this will probably flip without really any intervention from me. All right, let's get to work on Mist Oasis. Rebellion in six turns. We can speed that up just a scooch with my uh, cultists. Ah, delicious. At long last, the final capital that's on the menu. Miss McMikisuwachik. <laughs> Whatever this city is called, it's the last one that I need to flip and it's finally flipping. Let's get our cultists going. What do you mean it's going to full loyalty? How could that possible? How could that be possible? I've, I, I'm surrounding the city with horrible levels of, of anti-loyalty. Ne negative loyalty? In other news, almost my entire empire is worshipping the Venetian arsenal as well. I could probably very easily win a religious victory, but you guys demanded a peaceful domination game. And let me tell you, this game has been excruciating. I know I sound like I'm having fun, but this is the antithesis of a type of game that I enjoy. Most of the game I felt completely powerless, basically waiting for an era to change. And so I blame you, dear fans, for making me suffer through this like six to seven hour excruciating, excruciating <laughs> series of, uh, of turns. I, th I think the biggest shock to me was when I saw a Dido. That was where I thought like this was really dead, but she just never built a Kothan in her capital, so I was fine. The AI is doing its best to try to actually win the game, but they don't seem to be doing that good of a job. I mean, the sheer power of my ability to flip their cities with loyalty is just basically unstoppable. Oh, I'm only 40 loyalty away from essentially winning the game. Throw every cultist that you have at this. Get them, get it done. Just let me, let me exit this torturous game. Wow, I'm making nearly four, uh, uh, I'm making 1300 faith per turn. The Kree's capital is flipped. There goes the Maori capital. Thank you very much for watching. Ages. Holy God, please never ask me to do this ever again. I love you all very much and I hate you for asking me to do this. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.